Okay, so hello and welcome to today's webinar on Merckx.com and how to help you grow your business with Merckx.com. Um, I'm your host, Isabel Maroney. I am a marketing manager at MDF Commerce, uh, working with the Merckx brand. This might be news to you, and that's okay, because Merckx is part of a bigger family of products, which I kind of show here. So at MDF Commerce, there's four sectors of activity that you can see here. So strategic sourcing, e-commerce, supply chain, and e-marketplaces. And Merckx happens to fall under the strategic sourcing uh, sector of activity. And together with all of our sister companies, uh, we enable the flow of commerce. So that's kind of the big picture of where Merckx.com is. And we're here to uh, bring you a place for you to find business to help grow your business. Now for today, I will uh, jump into the Merckx world. This is just a quick snapshot of what we're gonna cover for today's presentation. Uh, I, will, I will jump into the demonstration pretty quickly at the beginning, and then we'll talk about our subscription packages. We also have some procurement portals. We'll do a quick recap and then let you know how you can contact us. So let's jump into that Merckx world. So over here, you'll notice here that um, Merckx is the place for buyers and suppliers to meet and conduct business through the competitive procurement process. Um, this is a place where um, public and private sector organizations post their contract opportunities, where you can find them, bid on them, and potentially win contracts to help grow your business. Uh, in the last uh, year, obviously, with the pandemic, we have no quite a few trends and I want to share some of those with you. So uh, ever since March of 2020, we've had over 303 buying organizations that have decided to uh, use Mercs as their exclusive place for their procurement needs. So those that's where you'll find all of those contracts. We have an average of over 3,500 new open solicitations every day on Mercs.com that are a wide range of different categories. Uh, over 11,000 exclusive solicitations are only on Merckx.com, and we also have um, extended that through our other portals that I will talk about a little later. And of course, we've noticed quite an increase in the construction, medical, PPE, and cleaning supplies um, contracts that are available on Merckx.com. But uh, you are definitely in the right place today if you're looking to use the Merckx.com tool to your advantage. So this is a quick little snapshot of what Merckx is about. So you can come here to search for relevant opportunities in your region, your industry, uh, based on your good or service. We can also create safe searches and notifications of those safe searches, sort of like online dating, uh, where we try to match your business needs with uh, what's available on Merck. So you can receive those uh, notifications directly to your inbox, and I'll show you how to set that up. Once you find opportunities, you can also look through the document request list when you have a premium package, um, where you can see other organizations that have also downloaded those documents, and that gives you kind of information about who your potential competitors are or possibly organizations that you might want to partner with or subcontract with for really really large uh, opportunities that might be available um, especially if you're new to this game this could be a really really great way for you to get your foot in the door by having a look at that document request list when it's available um, you can also look through our historical information database. Uh, so anything that was open is now closed. So you can kind of go look at buying trends. So that gives you kind of market analysis information from historical data. And we also have, um, nope, I will skip to the next one. So once you come to the bidding of, um, so of your um, submissions, you can do an electronic bid submission. So Obviously, with the pandemic, a lot more buying organizations have switched over to uh, electronic bidding, so you can submit your bids through the system online. Um, the buying organization will not have access. Oh, the audio is coming and going. I think hopefully we're okay now. I'll try not to move too much. I, I speak a lot with my hands. I'm part Italian. Sorry. <laughs> um, 
So as it relates to bidding, um, it does help quite a bit um, since the pandemic for having that paperless process and not having to um, exchange documents or any of that kind of thing. So everything is done online. And of course, the buying organization decides that, but it is a safe guarding process. So uh, the buying organization decides if they want that, and then they only have access to your bid after the closing date and time. So there's none of this being able to see it in advance. And then when it comes time to winning a contract, then you also have access to see uh, information on awards through our awards database. So you can go look historically uh, which organizations won contracts and oftentimes for the amount the contract was won. Um, and we'll look at that in the demonstration. One thing I want to mention is after you see that maybe you didn't win a contract, um, it's a good idea to request a debrief uh, with the organization because all organizations that are buying organizations, um, they all have their own way of you know, evaluating the submissions that they receive. And so it's up to them to decide how uh, many points are allocated to what you've submitted. And so asking for a debrief will give you the the chance to you know, ask questions on maybe where you fell short or where you did really, really well, and you know, take that information for the next time you decide to bid on a contract. So really, really valuable information there. And of course, we have um, a new feature that's available to our premium subscribers is a custom profile where you can include information about your organization um, and then buying organizations can look through that database to find you. So you can share, you know, your logo, any of your sales sheets, uh, videos, even uh, YouTube videos about your product. Um, you can include information about um, highlighting some of your, your best customers and that sort of information. So we will go into that uh, during the demonstration. And the other thing to mention is to highlight the working categories that your organization is found because we also like to share potentially some other tenders that you might have missed through um, that information that we know about you so we'll send you uh, additional ones that you might not have come across so before we go into the demonstration i want you to think a little bit about how you can optimize your access to those opportunities by excuse me using the various features available uh, that we will cover in the demonstration. There truly is strength in numbers. Consider that we have over 2,000 buying organizations from across North America that search through the large database of our over 200,000 suppliers, such as yourselves, um, through local, national, and international suppliers. And then, of course, hundreds of billions of dollars in projects are posted on Mercs every year. And we are definitely proud to share that we are fully Canadian organizations uh, headquartered in Ottawa, and we have our sister organizations that are also in uh, Quebec and Longueuil, and we have uh, other organizations that are in the United States and around the world. And then, of course, it's your time to compete to share for these supply opportunities. So let's have a look at how you can find, be found, and compete for potential business opportunities with all of those public and private sector organizations that are posting on Mercs today. Let's do the demonstration. Just want to have a quick look to see if there's any questions so far. There's lots of stuff to cover today, uh, so you'll probably want to refer to the recording afterward. Um, let me see where my... Where is my, there we go, mercs.com. So here we are. So those of you who are familiar with Mercs that are currently subscribed, usually you would come here and uh, go ahead and do your searches from this point or use the popular categories found here. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here. Um, or you would just go ahead and log in or sign up if you're currently not subscribed. That's pretty straightforward. Um, there's not really much to explain here. It's a typical landing page, if you will, uh, but I'm not logged in. So let's go ahead and do a, a search on, let's check, let's see what comes up when I type in janitorial. So you'll see here, there's 35 results. If I 
Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the searching uh, feature. Um, it's sort of, you know, enter the information that makes sense to you. You know your industry well, so you'll know what kind of keywords you're looking for. Um, it's one of those things, keep it simple and you'll get better results, but you can literally put in um, like janitorial. And if you're looking for a location, I recommend that you just enter it there with your other keywords. And then that will um, narrow your search results. So now there's 13 and you can literally go down and have a look at what's available. Um, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and select through the categories that are available and just, you know, select one of these and then click apply. And then of course, there's no results in that case. Maybe that was a little bit too um, specific. Maybe there's no janitorial um, under construction services, but um, you can get a sense of, of the types of categories that you can search through. I find using the categories in my search restricts the results uh, too much. So I tend to avoid using it unless I'm only using the category to search with. Um, and then in that case, I will just remove my filters here. Uh, I could select one of the categories here and then, I don't know, just anything here medical equipment and supplies, click apply, and then those re uh, results will appear uh, below. You can also use the last published date or the status of which database you want to search through. So all of the open solicitations, any of the closed solicitations, so anything that was open that is now closed. We have some organizations that share their bid results. And in other cases here, you can have a look at the award solicitation. We'll get into that a little bit later. But let's say, for example, I'll click on this first one here. Actually, that's an ACAN, so I'll just go to a different one. Um, here we go. If I click on that, now it's telling me that I need to sign up because of the type of solicitation that it is. But in some cases, they are open and available for me to have a look at. So it'll open up the solicitation information. It'll tell me that it is open and then you'll have the basic information about the solicitation. I'm just going to click on back here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in to our uh, learning environment. So this is the environment that we use to do training. Uh, so uh, basically, same idea, just there's less information. So I won't do any searches from this uh, area just because of the data that's available in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in. And first off, one of the first things I want to talk about is a bit of our admin type um, uh, elements, if you will. Uh, so I come in and I see that there's a bunch of solicitations. Uh, at a glance, I can see all the solicitations that are coming from public uh, organizations, agencies, and crown corporations. And if I was interested in just one or the other, I can simply click on it on the big blocks that are found here so that I can sort really quickly at a glance and see all of those opportunities. Now, of course, you'll see there's not that many opportunities just because of the, the setup for our learning environment. Under the status section as well, we can see that open solicitations in parentheses, it's the same number found here. So it's kind of really nice to see at a glance. And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and uh, break down what you're searching for on the left hand side by using all of the uh, categories that are available on the side. You can also go in a little bit deeper and have a look at the different keywords if you wanted to sort through uh, the results that are found in the middle of your screen. So let's have a look at the menu options at the top. So under solicitation is where you can do your solicitation search. Um, save searches we'll come back to um, is where you would uh, edit and create and modify your save searches. We also have bid management. So when you submit a bid, you can manage all of the bids that you've submitted. If you need to withdraw or make any changes before the closing date and time, you would manage them through here. And for qualifications, some organizations that we work with that are buying organizations uh, choose to have a qualification form that they use um, so that as a vendor, you need to qualify to do business with them. Um, I won't be going through that process here today 
today because then we're going to get into too many details. But if ever you are part of a qualification program, the buying organization uh, will notify you of that process to be able to work with them. And then if we have a look under the report section, there is a, a short little dashboard here that has a new feed of any activities on the solicitations that you follow. And I'll show you that a little bit later. There's also a section on all of your bids. We also have ordered documents. So anything uh, related to your ordered documents. Uh, so it's like a history of all the documents that you've ordered. You can come back and have a look and directly go back to that solicitation or download the documents again if you want to from here, or you can choose to not follow or change your following uh, if you're following or not this solicitation. Uh, looks like Jasmine is asking, yes, I will be emailing out the recording tomorrow. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, and then you have a legend here below that explains exactly uh, what the following actions are. So you have different options here. You can follow and receive notifications. So if there are any changes to the solicitation, we will notify you by email, or you can follow and receive the amendments themselves. But in some cases, there may be fees if we have to print and courier the documents to you. Uh, for example, those large blueprint type documents, the, there might be some fees attached to that. So just be mindful of that when you're selecting that um, at the point of downloading your documents. Now, if I go back to reports, you can also see your management reports. So uh, at Merck's, we're paperless, so we don't have any statements that we will mail to you. And this is where you can find any uh, of your statements on all transactions that you've had on Merck's. So you can come here and do that from here. Now you can change your language if you wanted to from here. You have the little question here that will take you to uh, our tutorials page. I'm just com coming back here. And then I wanna go through this uh, little menu that we have here. So under the little person icon, if you go under my profile, so this is where you can get the information about you yourself and your organization. So the details that you uh, entered when you did your registration. So that's that information here. You can make any changes to your password. Um, anywhere you wanna make any modifications, you can do so by clicking on the little pencil. Uh, your language preferences here, your contact method, uh, the email that you have in your account here, uh, or sorry, it's over here. That That's the email that we send you your uh, opportunity matching. So your save search notifications will go to that email. So do make sure that it's a valid email. Um, and then at the bottom here are the roles and privileges for my account. So as a user, these are the roles and privileges that I have access to for my account. Um, if you wanted to, you could add um, other employees from your organization to also have an account with Merck's through your organization. Um, and you simply do that from the little person icon here and under contacts. And so you could do that, especially nowadays, since so many people are working from home, um, maybe, you know, you're going away for a couple of weeks. And so you need someone else to be the person that will submit the bids on your behalf on, on the system. Then you can do that by adding a contact. Pretty straightforward. Just simply click on add contact. And then you can go ahead and add their information. Just be mindful that um, depending on which package you select, um, there may be fees involved with uh, adding someone. And then down here in section three is where you would select their role and their privileges. And so as you select these, the associated privileges will turn on or off. So you'll see um, what that means. Now, if I go here to my organization, this is kind of a fun part. Um, so the information that's found under your organization, this is where with a premium package, uh, you can get access to um, this part down here, the advertisement information. I'll come back to that. I mean, I was just too excited to talk about it. I skipped ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, but over here, we have our account information about your organization. So when you signed up and then your organization information, address, uh, phone number, all of that wonderful information. This part here, the other information, super, super inf uh, important information nowadays. Um, and we are adding to this section here. I just want to click on the little edit. Um, do come here and 
make a selection on your business structure. So if you're a public or private organization or other, do fill this in. Business type, we will be adding to this as well. Uh, but this goes towards, you know, Canada's great diversity. Uh, we will be adding more to this business type section. So um, keep going back and having a look so that if you're looking to add your type uh, to include it here, I'm just clicking on woman owned because I'm a woman and I feel like doing that today. Uh, so you can enter your business type here and buying organizations will have access to view this. So when they're looking for uh, specific uh, organization types that they want to do business with based on, um, you know, what they're looking for with their programs and their business rules, um, then they'll be able to find you through here. Now, if you have any specific statuses or certifications, you can enter those here, um, enter the date of when you were established, perhaps your number of employees. It just gives us a sense of the size of your organization. And then select save, and then that information is saved. The working categories is also one that's very important that a lot of people forget to uh, fill out. So this allows you to categorize your business within um, the world of Merck. So when buying organizations are looking for vendors that they want to do business with, they will have a look through the database to find you. So do make an effort to try and be specific about what your category is. Now, if I just minimize these, you'll be able to see that you can categorize yourself under the Merck's uh, available categories. You can use GSIN categories. So those are uh, government entities that use uh, these. So uh, goods and services identification numbers. So feel free to use that. And we also have the UN UNSPSC codes as well. Um, if you wanted to categorize yourself on, under one of these, then, you know, you can do that from here. And then you just click save once you've... Uh, once you've um, selected it. Uh, Laura is asking, do you pay a subscription free fee for every person that is added under your organization or is it fee based on organization? Uh, just quickly, whoops. Okay. When you add a contact, you choose which subscription you want them to have. So you can, you know, you can go ahead and select free and then enter their information and then they will have a free you have to enter that information then you'll be able to uh, tick off their role and privileges uh, but when it comes to them using mercs then um, you might want them to benefit from you know the different safe search notifications um, all of the other benefits of having mercs so you'll want to be able to make that decision based on um, all the things that we're going to cover today. So um, you can make that decision from here. Hopefully that runs, uh, uh, answers your question. And sorry, you have to go, Kaylee. Thank you for being here. <laughs> so let's go back to my organization and go to this uh, really, really fun part here. So under the advertising information section. So this is only available to premium plan subscribers. Um, so one thing you can do here is add your logo. So it looks like I have Merck's here, but I put Merck's logo, uh, but you could put your logo. So it kind of personalizes your, um, your page, if you will. And then you have your company description. So you can enter that in English and in French. You can also include your product and services highlights in English and in French any key customers that you want to highlight. Um, if you have any promotional material, you can upload up to four promotional materials and one video. So I just included a, a YouTube video um, that I did a while back. Um, so I've included those. So it's a great place for you to put your sales sheets or maybe some uh, brochures about your organization. You can add them in here. And then buying organizations have access to find that information about you. And so, you know, they can, choose to work with you or reach out to you uh, based on the information that you've put there. So that is for the organization the contacts. Finance and services are literally about, you know, your credit card details. Um, in this case, uh, I'm going to come back to the other services that we have based on U.S. tenders and private construction, um, but you can upgrade those services as well. Um, if you're looking at what service you have, you can come in here and make any modifications to your service. So if you're, for example, you're a basic pay as you go 
um, subscriber, you can come into your account here and modify your service here. It's all self-serve, so uh, you can go ahead and make any changes to, I, I have the full plan here, so uh, if you wanted to make any changes, you could just do those from here. Okay. Now, okay, Kamel, uh, we're going to get into that question right now. So Kamel is asking, how can we get alerts on airport and airline tenders? Let's do that now. So solicitations and search. So let's go back to the beginning here. So one of the things you would do is obviously you can use the enter keywords. Uh, airport and airline tenders is not going to show up here, uh, but you could enter that uh, if you wanted to. Uh, here. So let's just say I will do webinar because of today. Um, and I know that I have one that I created called webinars. So then you'll see I've created that search uh, through the search here. And then one um, opportunity appears. I like what I see. So I'm going to go ahead and save that search. So I can use that button from there. I can also do it from the solicitation uh, menu. Uh, but over here, I can go ahead and have a look at all of the different categories that I can create a search from. So probably for you, Kamel, um, you could come in here and then create a safe search on airport and airlines, let's say. Um, if there were any words that you wanted to exclude um, based on how you've searched before on Mercs and then you see that some things come up that you're not interested in, you know, so you could kind of be mindful of that while you're excluding it. You kind of have to play with it and see what you what comes up for you. Um, if you were looking for a specific location, um, I would focus on Canada here. Um, categories, you know, you could go look in those different categories if you wanted to. Um, and then select them as you choose. And then you would just go ahead and save that search. Of course, I have to give it a name. Airport Airlines. Um, and then over here, you have that set as default search. So all that means is when I log into Mercs, immediately all of the results that will appear in the, in the results area will be uh, from this one. So I'm just going to deselect that. I'm going to click on save and then when I log in to Mercs I can just simply go here to the pull down menu and you'll see that I do have other save searches as well so I can you know select whichever one and then the results uh, will appear in the screen um, if anything is available. Uh, so someone is asking if the search function has a smart searching, for example, use of quotes, sign, design, build. Okay, I see what you mean. Um, thank you for your question. <laughs> Uh, so uh, our save search um, is kind of like an elastic search, so it does pay attention to that sort of thing. I just recommend that you still try both ways and see what comes up when you're using Mercs. We are continuously evolving um, how Mercs searches. We're in adding some uh, artificial intelligence on the back end, so there's a lot of changes that are still also coming uh, further this year, next year. So we have a massive team behind that's working on all of that. So I do recommend that you give it a try, uh, the different ways to see what comes up and then you'll see if those results make sense to you. So that was the save search, uh, that I wanted to show. You can also click this, get notified of opportunities, which are basically related to those save searches. Uh, but I'll just go from this area. So from solicitations, and then I click on save search and that takes me to the listing of all of my save search. Now, if I wanted to start receiving those emails, uh, Kamal, uh, receive those, uh, notifications. I can just simply come here. So this is the safe search that we created earlier and I simply turn on notifications and then you'll see that you'll start receiving emails every day that something is posted that matches that search criteria that you have saved. One of the things that I wanted to mention is you can have an unlimited amount of safe searches, as many as you want. Um, I always recommend to keep it simple. The, the KISS theory does really apply here. Um, the less amount of things that you put in the search, um, the more results you get. So it depends on exactly what you're looking for. Um, and same thing with the 
the notifications, you can have up to 10. So you can only get up to 10 because we aggregate all of the results that you're looking for into one email so that you're not receiving 10 emails for each one. So everything will be pulled into one email. Um, and if I wanted to, I could turn on the default um, if I wanted to at this point or turn on or off my notifications. Um, in here in the actions column, of course, you can edit any of those. Uh, one thing that I do like is the little, um, the little time here. If you want to go have a look at the history of any of the changes to the safe search. So sometimes you might want to edit or use more new buzzwords if you wanted to or change a location or you wanted to restrict uh, how you're searching for the specific thing, then you can come in here and see the different changes that you've added or removed from the, the, the search. And so as you go through time, you'll be able to see the different types of results that you get in those email notifications. So that's just another little fun thing uh, that you can get that history of your changes. And of course, if there's any that you're not interested in anymore, you could just hit the trash can and out it goes. Uh, one of the things to mention, so when you're setting up your account under your organization, uh, remember that portion that I talked about um, where you select your working category. So based on what you put in the working category, um, this is the section where we will send you uh, opportunities that you might have missed that were not in your uh, safe search, for example. Uh, so these might be additional ones. Um, based on your category of work. So you can receive those notifications. They'll usually be added at the bottom of your other notification emails, but uh, just be mindful if you turn that on or off, if you find that you're receiving too many emails from us or whatever, you can have a, you know, try turning that on or off. So some people just depend on the emails that they receive as opposed to going on to Mercs and doing searches themselves. So it's just that kind of uh, thing to be aware of for yourself. If you really don't want to miss out on anything. All right, so let's go have a look at that solicitation that I created webinar. So now when you find something of interest and you want to go in and review that solicitation, I simply click on it and then it takes me to um, the notice information. So I can see there on the left, the big time clock telling me how much time is left to bid. Uh, so do be <laughs> aware of that. Um, and then we have the different sections on the left hand side that we'll go through to have a look at. So under notice, there's the basic information about the solicitation. In this case, there's an A. That means that there's been an amendment to it. So when you see that, that's all that means. Um, there's different information here, the questions acceptance deadline change, closing date change, you know, the information about the buying organization or the buyer uh, responsible for this solicit or solicitation description. In this case, they have, you know, general requirements. There is a bid security, bid bond requirement. There's a pre-bidding event, you know, so you want to make sure to pay attention to that kind of thing. In this case, a bid submission process is an electronic bid submission. Of course, this is all fake, so I'm just letting you know. Uh, so an electronic bid submission, which means you'll be submitting your bid online through Mercs. And then, of course, you could see this one has a two envelope bidding. Um, that's a lot of uh, information there. So that's an example of one. Then we have the category in which this tender is categorized under. Um, of course, it shows us the amendments, so those changes where we saw the little A's. Then documents and items. So these are the documents that you want to download um, related to this solicitation. So before I do that, I just want to go and skip over to the plan holders list. So uh, Q&A and plan holders list are, are for uh, premium subscribers um, and that's decided by the buying organization so they choose if they want to share that information. So the plan holders list is the other organizations that have downloaded the documents. So I mentioned it earlier where um, these, these other organizations are either your competitors, their potential partners that you might want to work with if you're new to the game um, and you want to be able to work with one of these organizations to be a partner or a subcontractor. Um, so that's how you would do that. The information that's found there, you can contact that person um, and see 
uh, about working with them. So this is one of those things that's important to mention, especially in the public sector, it keeps things open, fair, and transparent uh, for all buying organizations, or sorry, uh, <laughs> Sorry, supplier organizations. Um, so before I do the plan holders, uh, uh, before I down, before I show you, come back to this, I will go ahead and download those documents. Um, you could go ahead and click them depending on your uh, subscription package, but I'm just going to, whoops, wrong one, order on the top right hand corner here. When I click on order, then it will take me through an order basket. And of course, I need to select how I want to follow the solicitation. So if I want to be notified of those amendments or any changes to the solicitation, so follow and receive notification will be us sending you an email saying, by the way, there's been a change to a solicitation that you've downloaded. Please come back onto Merck's to download that amendment. Or you can follow and receive the amendment documents, but in that case, there may be fees involved depending on the size of the amendment. So I'm just going to select uh, this one. Um, and then you'll notice here the delivery method download. I mean, if you wanted other options, then you'll have to potentially pay depending on what it is. And in this case, it's only selecting the quantity of the English language, not the French language. So you'll be aware that that's the difference here. And then I would go ahead and continue. I confirm my order. And then of course it says zero dollars because my subscription package, I have the, the top of the line national package. But if you were a basic subscriber, pay as you go. Um, in this case here at this point, you would be charged the $60 per solicitation. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and process that order. And now I can go ahead and download the documents by clicking on the little uh, Adobe icons. So I'll close that. And it takes me back to the solicitation. So now you'll notice that button here. Uh, it used to say follow, now it's saying following. And then if I go back to the plan holders list, now I have been added to the list. This is me, it's all me, but anyway, in this case, I have been added to the list. Um, and then the Q&A, so these are questions and answers. They are done through the system. So if the buying organization chooses to do so, uh, you can ask your questions directly in the system. The nice thing about it is that the buying organization will choose to either respond to you in private through the system, or they will choose to make the questions and answers um, available to all document takers. Um, in this the, the thing to mention too is that it will not share your information so uh, you'll notice here i don't know who has asked these questions and then the answers are found here but you'll also notice there's question one three and four so that means question two was likely responded to in private but it's super straightforward if you want to ask a question click on the ask a question button enter a subject and your question and that question goes directly to the buyer contact for the solicitation. And then we have the audit, which is basically a history of all the activities related to this solicitation. Now, I'm going back here. Um, so now I'm back uh, at, the, at the search. So let's say that at this point, I was looking to submit a bid. So usually you would download those documents. You spend a lot of time reading through those tender documents, getting to understand exactly what the buying organization is looking for. It's sort of like uh, applying for a job, you know, how you tailor your, your resume to the employer. You're using the same words that you're speaking their language. So it's the same kind of idea here. So in a lot of cases, when you're responding to an RFP, depending what it is, of course, because some cases it's just quick quotes. In other cases, it's really, really large, you know, uh, or you have to submit samples. You know, there's all kinds of different uh, types of procurement. Uh, but do pay attention to reading those documents. Try to get other people in your organization or even partners that you work with, whether they're financial or legal people, uh, even HR people. In some cases, they might help um, redirect. If you're looking for help responding to RFPs, there's tons of books out there, local you know, chapters Indigo, uh, Amazon, books about 
specifically about um, the procurement process and how to respond to those RFPs. There is no such thing as a, you know, a canned RFP response. You really, really have to work on each one uh, individually based on what the requirements are. And there's organizations out there that are there that that's all they do. They will write your uh, response for you. So you can simply Google for those kinds of organizations, the tons of them out there um, that are there to help you uh, respond. So hopefully that helps you. Oh, there's also on LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, I know that there's some organizations on LinkedIn that are there um, also helping with the whole procurement, pro procurement process. So I will try and find my Oh, if I was, oh, sorry. Now I'm at the point of wanting to submit my bid. Apologies. I had lost where I was. Um, you can go ahead and, you know, search for it here. At this point, you would probably know the solicitation number. So you could enter it there to go and find it. Or if you wanted to, you could go where you uh, downloaded the documents. If you wanted, you could go there. Um, so this is the one I just downloaded. I could go back to the solicitation from here, as long as you get back to this point so that you can place that bid. So we'll just go through a quick uh, bid submission. Uh, it's 145, okay. So now I'm gonna go through the place a bid uh, process. So now in this case, I decide if I wanna place a new bid or place a no bid. Um, in some cases, buying organizations see that you have downloaded the documents, so they're wondering if you intend on bidding or not. And because you downloaded the documents, it makes sense to, oh, we're not going to bid on it this time, so let's go ahead and place a no bid. And then, you know, you just simply uh, go through that process. You can change your mind as long as the solicitation has not closed, so you can see that information is available here. Uh, so you just want to be mindful of that when you're going through it. The other thing to mention is if you are a basic pay as you go subscriber, you download, you paid to download those documents, then your electronic bid submission will be included for that solicitation. So let's go ahead and place a new bid. Click on continue. And then it takes you through the four step process. So it's pretty straightforward. This one is a little bit of a more complex um, <laughs> one, uh, I didn't realize that when I was setting this up, but you literally can quickly drag and drop your documents right into the, the different sections here. Uh, one thing I like is if you're like me and you like to keep your files and folders all nicely organized, then you can do so by zipping them all up together. And then when you upload your zip document, it will keep the same structure uh, within. So pretty straightforward. Uh, where is my document? Over here, I have samples of documents. So I will go ahead and add my proposal document. This is a zip file. Click open. It will upload. So keep that in mind, the upload time. So try not to do this at the very, very last minute because of the time that it takes to upload the document. So many people are online at the same time, too. Um, you know, you just want to make sure that you get yourself enough time because it's, if you don't, you know, and you miss that closing date and time at the top, like I have a lot of time here. Uh, but try not to wait to the very, very last minute. You know, get yourself in advance an hour so it's easy peasy. You're not rushing. You don't miss anything. You know, and if something should go wrong and then you have to call us, you know, just, you know, plan for that in advance in your mind so that you're ready to go um, and then see how it kept the structure of all of my information um, really really nice and clean if there's anything that you want to remove you can go ahead and use the action column to click on the little gear and make any changes as you go along now in this case you'll see that it asks for different documents so technical requirements in this case they want a functional requirement as well so i will go ahead and add a functional requirements document see that one went really quickly because the size of the document is pretty uh small but it's still pending okay now it's complete this one is optional this one is optional so i will not add those but just pay attention to what they're asking for Let's click on next to get to, in this case, they have a two, um, a two envelope 
process. So the pricing uh, document goes in a second one. So the buying organization cannot open your pricing until after they've reviewed um, your proposal. Uh, Jonathan is asking, as a software de developer, will I need the premium package just to respond to RFPs for organizations that may have their head office in a different province? Uh, I might need to take your question offline. I have to look into a little bit more details, but generally speaking, it depends on what the requirement is. So if the buying organization is in Quebec and you're in Ontario and you have an Ontario package, it depends where they want the work to take place. So if they categorize it as Quebec, then I believe you need to have a Quebec uh, one, but I, I'll have to double check on that. I'm sorry, I don't have that answer, Jonathan. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's, this one here is for the pricing. So you can add your pricing document here. In this case, it's optional. So I'll just, we've seen how to upload a document. And you're welcome, Jonathan. <laughs> so I'll click on next. It will take us to the pricing tab. So in this case, I don't know, I'm just gonna add any number here. We're gonna click on next. will take us to our submission. Uh, in this case, they were requiring an e-bonding uh, document. So e-bonding is basically a process that happens outside of the Merck's world. So this happens a lot in the construction industry. So they want to certify that you're able to cover um, a, certain, a certain amount of money to run the project. Uh, so in this case, you would have to work with a broker to get a certified document saying that that you can do this, uh, but it won't let me process, proceed without that information. So um, a sample bid bond is basically a document that has a seal on it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and then there's like a, there's some links there that will verify the bond um, so that you can go ahead and work with them. So I'll upload that document. And then we find ourselves in the bidder compliance and authentication. And so this is the part where you're entering your name because you're the person in your organization that has um, the authority to bind uh, what you're submitting um, associated with your organization. So it does say here that I haven't read all the documents and amendments. And the only reason why is because I just downloaded those documents. So it doesn't think that I had time to read through and create my profile. So we can just disregard that for now. Um, and of course I enter my name and my password, the password that I use to log into my account. And then I go ahead and submit my bid. Do I wanna proceed? Yes, I do. Then I have my confirmation here. This confirmation uh, gives me the date right up to the second of when I've submitted my bid. I have a confirmation number. Um, all of this is legally binding. Um, and of course you can download a PDF version or uh, to save it to your files. And then if I go back to the bid management, I'll just zoom back out. Um, any of the solicitation or bids that I have submitted, uh, I can come back here in the bid management, which I can also access from the solicitations menu item at the top. Um, so in this case here is waiting an answer. This one I've submitted. Um, if the closing date and time has not passed, then I can still go ahead and make edits to that solicitation. That one's closed. So over here, I can go ahead and view my submission. I can modify my bid price. I can withdraw and submit a new one. And that is always included in your package. So that's it for the eBid submission. So tips for success, I covered a few of those while we were in the demonstration mode, uh, but try to notice if there's any specific agreement types. So a lot of uh, organizations need to be compliant with CETA, for example, or those types of things. So do make sure to, to pay attention to that. Read those documents. That's where you get all the information from the buying organization. They're requesting your good or service. So they'll be the ones that describe it in their documents. And then when you notice that something Thing seems off, you know, ask those questions through that asking question process. In some cases, it won't be on Mercs. In some cases, they describe what you need to do to ask questions within those documents. So pay attention to that as well. Try to meet those mandatory requirements. And if you don't, maybe explain why. And maybe it's because you have a better solution to um, the problem that they're trying to solve. 
um, try to get help. So go online or read those books, attend webinars. There's tons of information out there. I know it can be a very like difficult process, but you know, it's for you to win business. So you probably want to do a really good job at it. Um, try to look for those partnerships and subcontracting opportunities. So especially in those cases when you're new to the to the business, this is a great way for you to get your foot in the door. Um, also work with others on your team. That's also very, very helpful. Now, when it comes to our membership packages, so uh, basically we have the basic free as you go um, and then free. It's $60 per uh, solicitation and everything that's included for that solicitation at that point. So for those of you who are new, you know, start out with a pay as you go um, subscription, get a sense of what's there, create a few safe searches. So you start receiving those notifications. So you get a sense of what's there. And then once you decide that, okay, I, I like what I see, these results are great for me, then you can choose to decide uh, which package you want. Um, so it could go locally. So you can choose the $25 per month build annually. So that's the annual package at the top or at the bottom is the monthly fee if you wanted to pay month per month. So you choose your, your um, province that you do business in. If you wanna to expand to the neighboring uh, provinces that you have, then definitely the regional package makes sense for you. Um, like, I don't know, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec is a popular one, or the Atlantic, or, or um, the Atlantic um, provinces as well. All of the plans include the Northern, uh, provinces and territories as well or you can go ahead and go national and then that's you know fill your boots you got the whole country going on there and of course the premium packages includes that um, all the EBID submissions are included you know free download for all of the solicitations in the region that you're in um, access to the document request list access to uh, the questions and answers as well you have unlimited safe searches uh, and the create that custom profile. So make sure that you go in there and create that uh, custom profile. So hopefully that answers your questions about the package. Oh, look at this. I have all these little animations. Ooh, so you save 50% off when you go uh, annual. So it's, you know, it's up to you to choose how you want to um, work with us. Uh, Brian, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, and we have three minutes left. So really, really quickly, we do have two other services. We have the US tenders service um, with our sister company in the US. Um, all of the, the federal, state and local uh, US um, gov government opportunities that are available. So if you're wanting to expand to the US, um, you know, you could do so. Um, and I will get your information if you want, if you're interested. Um, and I'll get you in touch with my colleague, Richard, who will help you with that service. Uh, we also have our Canadian construction, private construction um, service. So this service is not about tenders, but it's if you're really looking to identify projects that are in the construction industry that make sense for you, um, this is a good place to get that information. When I say projects, I'm talking about those like home and condo, condo products, uh, uh, projects, if you will, storefronts, restaurants, you know, things like Walmart, Canadian Tire, even Tim Hortons and Starbucks, you know, you'll find those project details in our private construction service. If you are interested, um, I will be sending you in that email more information. So it'll touch on this as well. So you can go ahead and get like a free analysis if it makes sense for your business um, to get that information. So private construction. I did talk about those procurement portals. So there's additional business opportunities that are available through these uh, portals. So um, all of these, for ex with the exception of Enbridge and the Ministry of Transportation, uh, all of their open solicitations are fed through Mercs.com. So you will find those solicitations also on Mercs. Uh, but these, uh, these uh, portals are powered by Mercs. And in order to have uh, access to these, you will potentially have to register or qualify to do business with these organizations. Um, it will require a separate subscription. Um, and of course, the details are, are on respective uh, websites. So, and you can still find these through Mercs. And then just a quick recap, you know, if you wanna have advantage to 
all of the opportunity or sorry, all the opportunities and all of the features and benefits of Mercs, then definitely sign up with a premium package. It gives you access to all, you know, 50% off with the annual package. I'm doing my sales pitch. Um, make sure that you optimize your custom profile and enter the working categories and that advertising information when you have that premium package. Um, but do put in your working categories for sure and your business type um, and take advantage of that section. Ask a deep for a debrief in any case where you might have lost in, um, and didn't receive an award, you know, ask for that debrief, get that information. If you're interested in private construction or US tenders, please let me know and I will put you in touch with Eric or Richard, my colleagues that are responsible for their services. I will send you that email with the uh, resources that are available. And of course, if you want to contact us, uh, we have our 1-800 uh, number on the screen. Um, you can also email us at mercs at mercs.com. Um, and our call center agents are available Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. And we are now at the top of the hour. So I will jump into questions. Uh, I see that a few people had to drop off. I thank you very much for being with me here today. I think I've talked enough. Uh, so I will be sending you that email tomorrow. So you can look out for that. And hopefully I've responded to everything you were looking for in the Mercs.com world. So I will keep the window open for questions. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you very much for being here with me today, and I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you.